Hi and welcome, I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. In this show, we will talk about alternative movie posters, and we will look at the latest releases from the galleries, and every episode will also have an artist that will tell us about their work, and they will answer us all the movie-related questions we can come up with. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art and what we are talking about. So check us also out on YouTube for the video version. And now let's get started. The first poster I want to focus on is Spider-Man Homecoming by Daniel Taylor, who focuses on the Spider-Man in the middle of the art, as you can see, and also Vulture on top of him. I love that it's very simple on the sides and that it has this um, this certain focus of the main characters of the movie that are very important as long as the MCU keeps going with these characters, especially since they are probably going to bring Vulture back. And this is all very interesting, so I would like to see what he comes up with with maybe the next Spider-Man movie. Our next po poster is by Greg Staples, who did this wonderful Thundercats poster, which also has a new animated TV show and some new stuff should come up. I don't know if a movie is planned or not, um, but we will see. And this poster was, uh, I think, a lot in the, in the scene or in the Facebook groups. A lot of people talked about this poster and they really liked it. Um, I also have a more cartoonish Thundercats poster. And I think I like this one better, though. And I'm sadly that I did not get it. But maybe in the future, an ISO is out and you all know what I'm talking about. So we will find maybe what we're looking for. The next one I want to talk about is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one by Simon Marchner, which is really cool. I like this, this little uh, outline he did um, in, in form of a chainsaw. Really, really cool stuff. And the house, of course. And uh, this is very uh, resembling for the movie. And I could definitely see that, especially with the Spider-Man Homecoming one, which is the same colorway, um, hanging up in my house. But I didn't get this one either. But the next one is by Matt Ferguson, um, which came out at the Bottleneck Gallery. And they came up with this uh, combination for The Way. It's called The Way. Uh, which is focused on the TV show The Mandalorian. And one of my favorite shows of uh, 2019, I really loved it. Can't wait until the new one comes out in October, I think it is. And this composition, he, he's, he's doing this, this kind of style uh, and the way he's illustrating stuff with this, with this angle he's doing. Um, all the other ones, the late ones, have that as well. Uh, you can see it in the background here. There is the Lord of the Rings one. That has also this kind of angle, which is also by Matt Ferguson and uh, uh, the Star Wars A New Hope one he did also at that angle. And I'm excited uh, when he changes uh, changes up his style or when uh, or what he's going to do with this kind of style in the future. And I think you could also do it like if you have stairs with this angle, you could probably um, set them up real nice. And I like the composition as well, especially that he put in the uh the uh, i forgot the name of the animal but the animal in there the the sign of the mandalorian uh especially on boba fett's shoulder so really really cool stuff and it looks really great i have it up uh, in my place and great work matt ferguson the next one i want to talk about is the back to the future trilogy by andy fairhurst the first one um as you can see is this one really cool stuff i think i think there's another one with the with the train tracks which is what's really cool but um, here is the other one, Back to the Future 2 and obviously Back to the Future 3, which focus especially on the cars and the way they come out of the um, out of their time of the uh, time zone or like travel time traveling. Yeah. So cool, cool idea. And I like the concept. It looks really cool. And um, yeah, Andy first. Good job on that one. And the next one I want to focus on is by Mark Chilcott, which is called The Showdown, which is like in the part of the Batman series. And I like this kind of almost looking like Blade Runner-esque style with the colors he used and uh, with the Batman looking down from the building. Really, really cool stuff. Very um, simple with the, with the contrast with the dark, uh, like half, half of his dark and the other half is like lighter and really, really good uh, job by Mark Chilcott. 
Also another one from the Ball Night Gallery is the um, Ruiz Burgos, uh, Burgos, Burgos, I hope I didn't botch that name, um, Little Bounty with the child from the Mandalorian also. I have it also in the background. I, I can, maybe someone can see it. He's, he's all the way behind the microphone there. And yeah, really, really uh, great art. I mean, the, the digital one doesn't even do it justice. In person, it looks so wonderful. Looks really like uh, the child. And I'm, I'm also ordered the Sideshow collectible, the child, which I'm really looking forward to when it, uh, when it comes maybe at the end of the year. And uh, great work on Burgos' part. And another one I have up is this one here by DKNJ, um, the Imperial Death Trooper from Rogue One. And also this one, you, you can't even really tell in the digital version, uh, the, the printed version looks way, way better. And it's a really, really nice print. I love the details on the helmet where you can see uh, half of the Death Star, how it is assembled. And that's the plot of Rogue One, obviously. Great, great art. And I also loved the Flory series. Uh, this one is called T-Rex doesn't want to be fed, he wants to hunt, which is part uh, of the uh, Jurassic Park series he did. Um, the first one was with the Velociraptor and a really, really good one. I don't have the first one. I was really thinking about getting this one, but maybe in the future, ISOs, I will try to find it. And I hope there will be more dinosaurs in the future. And another one I got is only partly seen here is the um, Pablo Oliveira on Neo Tokyo, which is focused uh, focused on the movie Akira. And uh, this cityscape he did is really great. And he also did lately the Lord of the Rings one, one I think came out last week. And uh, this cityscape is unbelievably good. And in person, it also looks really nice. I can't wait to put it up. Uh, I have it to flat right now and uh, to flatten it right now and um, we will see how it's going to look like when I'm done with this. And the last one I want to focus on is by Scott C who had a show in, 1988 gal in the 1988 gallery or gallery 1988 in Los Angeles and um, this one is the, the whole Star Wars Galaxy one and the show he did is I think most of it sold out. A couple, of, a couple of things or items will be available probably in the next couple of days on the, on the gallery's website. So head over to Gallery 1988 and see what's left when it comes out soon. Okay, so um, I think this is it for the latest releases I like to talk about. So if you have another couple of releases or if you have artists that came up with digital art that is really beautiful, please send them in. Let me know. I'm always open to show uh, other artists and uh, show what they have to offer for our alternative movie poster scene. And now our guest we have, will have today is Scott Saslow. Scott Saslow is an American designer, I'd say. Uh, he does compositions a lot and he is really, really a great artist. I, fe I featured him at the Oscar night we did here at, at our, our local movie, cin uh, movie cinema. And we had a um, bunch, of, bunch of his art, a bunch of other artists that we tried to like give the people some more alternative movie posters. And I really enjoy this man. Scott, how are you? Fine. Uh, someone joked online that the uh, quarantined life is pretty much like uh, their normal life. And even though I'm fine, I'm having enough work to do from home that I don't really need to even leave the apartment uh, a whole lot. Mm, but how's the situation in, uh, in uh, California right now? Pretty much the same as it is anywhere else. Okay. I drove by the supermarket yesterday and the parking lot was packed so i just kept driving but uh, we're at least here i have two roommates and uh, we're doing okay um good. again all things considered and there are plenty of folks uh, who are not as fortunate too so yeah sadly i mean uh with all the movies being canceled right now that's that's what i'm going to cover in the in the movie news podcast later on but there's there's so much stuff going on and speaking of movies uh is there any chance you saw a movie lately <laughs> Um, well, I've been, uh, I don't go to the movie theater that often, but I started subscribing to the uh, Criterion channel yeah. and it's, uh, it's a, it's a blast. It's funny. They even send out these cool metal, uh, mm -hmm. uh, cards for their charter subscribers. But, uh, 
yeah, I've watched, uh, so I've been watching stuff on the Criterion channel. I watched uh, Solaris. Solaris, okay. The original. Yeah, let me let me switch that for, because uh, you brought a poster for that, so. It's not mine, it's yeah, just the poster. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, people can now see it. it yeah, it's, uh, it's long. I heard a lot about it. Uh, you know, Russian science fiction film based on a novel. Uh, I liked it. Looks beautiful. So you, so we're uh, talking about the original one. That that has has yeah. to be said because there's the remake, uh, the George Clooney remake, yeah. right? Yeah, that Soderbergh did. I have not seen that one actually. I've been told I should, and I will make a point to do so. But um, but this one, I liked it. Um, it didn't quite reach. On one hand, it didn't it didn't reach that level of transcendence that you want in a movie like this. Uh, the ending, the last shot, was sort of out there. Mm -hmm. uh, But at the same time, the movie wasn't, it wasn't one of those movies where you watch it and you're like, oh my God, what the hell? Like, I need to see that again. I need to, it wasn't that for me. It was sort of like right in the middle, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but it was good. I'm glad I watched it. I'm working my way through. They have some of the, uh, criterion, the, the extras on yeah. the channel too. So I'm working my way through those. Yeah, I just, I just got lately, uh, the talking about criterion, I got the Kurosawa box, which was really nice. And I really liked Nice. So, um, yeah. Um, and speaking of movies coming out and getting something, I mean, since there are not that many movies coming out lately, all the big ones are canceled. But um, I think uh, I heard about Ghostbusters because uh, th that's what you want to watch, right? Is, is that what you said earlier? Well, that's, yeah, I'll check that one out. I did not. Uh, we won't get into it. I did. I'm not a fan of the uh, Paul Feig yeah. version that they did a few years ago, but we won't go there. But um, I just didn't think it was funny. <laughs> But this one looks interesting, and I am cautiously optimistic. The trailer, it almost looks like Ghostbusters if Spielberg directed it. Yeah. Um, I'm a kid, suburban setting. And... Yeah, I'm also very excited how they and how they fit in the, the older characters from the original Ghostbusters, how that's going to look like. And, um, yeah, what, what was... Um, um... I mean, how how did you like this regular poster? Because I put it in there now, and uh, people can see it. H how do you uh, like it? Uh, it's fine. I like it. Uh, it's more often than not, if, like if a poster is really, I just want to pull it up on my end too. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, more often than not, people will bitch if like a poster is really bad, mm -hmm. and there's some posters that are excellent, but the vast majority of them, like anything else, are just sort of fine mm -hmm. you know this one's fine it's you know i'll always be nostalgic seeing the uh the ecto one uh anyway so it's cool just to see that on a poster again <laughs> yeah i mean I, uh, i uh did you do you follow some some collecting stuff because i the sideshow just uh, they they shipped the ecto one for i mean they had like a one one to six scale model of, of the ecto or something like that or it's like really really big my goal one day is to have a shelf with the uh, the Ectomobile, the Bluesmobile, and all three DeLoreans from each Back to the Future film. But again, I, you know, it's just more stuff. And I have way too much stuff for one person already between all the books and all the movies and spaces at a premium. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you want to present something like that the right way. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of uh, Blues Brothers, because when we talked earlier, in, I mean, in a, a couple days ago, uh, you said your one of your favorite movies is Blues Brothers, right? Or would you say? Yeah, that? Uh, yeah. Why, why um, is that? Why why is uh, Blues Brothers your favorite movie? I'm not entirely sure to be honest, and it sort of alternates actually with the original Ghostbusters for all time favorite. But I I'll tell you, I showed a friend of mine the Blues Brothers. Uh, I showed a friend of mine the Blues Brothers a while ago, and. Um, He had never seen it. He knew of it. And I asked him, okay, I, I didn't ask him what he thought. I asked him, why do you think I like it so much? Mm -hmm. And he said, it's idiosyncratic. It's, <laughs> a, it's a comedy. It's a car chase movie. It's a musical. It's got a little bit of everything. And if they made the movie today, it would cost $300 million. Yeah. But um, be, be, uh, the, the, the Blues Brothers poster, I got it somewhere here as well. There it is. Uh, I'm just gonna pull it up. Um, how did you? How do you like this poster? Or from what perspective would you? Or, or would you make an, a poster like that? Or would you 
since it's one of your favorite movies, would you change that? Um, I like it just the way it is, actually. I only wish uh, Universal loves to re-release -re this all the time, and I just wish they would use this for one of the releases. Mm -hmm. They did a DVD, and it's Jake and Elwood over a same pose over a plain background, and then for the Blu-ray, they did something else. Mm -hmm. And now for the 4K release that was just announced, they're doing something else. Yeah. And, you know, just one release, I would just love to see them use this. But that's just a pet peeve and mm -hmm. first world problems, <laughs> as they say. And uh, uh, would, you, would you redesign it if you could? Or um... I would love to do my own. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What, 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 funny, what would you be your own take if you could do it? Or do you have a spontaneous idea? Well, it's funny, of, of you know, all the alternative posters I've made, there's still a few of my favorite films, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, a lot of the Star Treks, etc., that I haven't done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, up till now, I really haven't had an idea. I have a couple, but between, you know, you have car chase, you have yeah. songs, you have these totally opposed concepts so you know how do you combine them into one image mm -hmm. that's the challenge okay. but other designers have done some great uh work on this one and one day it'll happen Perfect. maybe later this uh this year's its 40th anniversary actually yeah that would be that would be a good uh, thing because they did for example the uh what was it dario uh for apocalypse now which he did for the for for the anniversary yep. that this kind of, kind of style yeah that this I, i love it when they uh when they do the anniversary stuff because there's a lot of cool artists that they use now that they come up with cool ideas and um speaking of posters um what are your favorite posters right now could you name one or two three whatever you have well as far as the alternative poster scene uh i love what uh Dr i call it well, drew Drew Phillips, uh, yeah. aka Sister Hyde. I love what he did with 1917. Uh, hold up, where did there it is? Okay, I pulled it up right now. And yeah, I, I love that one as well. I I featured it at the Oscar night where I featured your stuff as well. Um, and we featured that poster for the movie, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's a really it, great one. It actually got some good traction on Twitter because, you know, I personally hate social media, but it's a necessary mm -hmm. evil. Uh, in this business and you never know who's seeing your stuff or but i mean you know, you're, but, you're very active I, i would never tell i could never tell that you don't like it i if i could ditch it i would but i can't so i'm gonna make the best of it um but yeah and actually because she i'm in van nuys and she's just a couple towns oh, okay. away so hang out now and then and she was telling me recently that you know like so many of the posters we do it started out as one concept and then just sort of slowly turned into another concept and uh uh you'll interview her at some point and she could tell you more about it but yeah i thought this is a awesome poster what, what did you what is your favorite part of the poster what did you like about it so much uh it's I'm trying to think what the phrase is it's it's cohesive it's of a whole it doesn't you know it's not like there's one element that It's superfluous, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it all, uh, uh, it calls attention to itself, but it also makes you like really look at it, like, you know, trying to figure out what else is going on in it. Yeah, that's, and that's, just, for me, it was that way because like the first time I saw it, it I, it, the, it's not like basically an actor you could recognize in it, like the, yeah. the soldier in the middle and uh, the tree is not a cherry tree really, or you couldn't tell that it is a cherry tree. And so the connections from the movie is it's like really hard. So you have to really think about it. Um, what is going on here? And even on my own 1917 poster, I used a real World War One photo. It's a photo of two soldiers, but it's not the two actors mm -hmm. in the movie. Yeah, but they were from but, the you know back, what? right? They were from the back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. But you know what? There are no rules to this thing. That's yeah. allowed. Yeah, sure, <laughs> of course. I mean, it's a great poster, and yours as well. So I really liked. I mean, um, I didn't say that before, but I really liked your uh, Oscar series you did, like the for the oh, best picture ones, and the, there was really, really good designs in it. And I uh, wish some movie studios would pay attention to that and take some of those designs that are really, really cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's always nice. Uh, again, it's nice to be recognized for this stuff. And I know a few other designers, uh, Eileen, SG posters, uh, Shout out you know, to she's Eileen, been yeah. it. 
And, um, yeah, we'll see what, uh, although at this rate, who knows, uh, with all the movies being delayed, who knows what the nominees next year are going to be. Yeah, it's going to be weird. Yeah, exactly. I did, I did not even think about that. <laughs> that's a crazy, a crazy thought. So we will see how, how that's going to go. Okay, uh, do you have another one or we should look at? or? Yeah, I think this one's Brian Lenning, uh, for for? the poster he did for Candyman, yeah. the new one that's coming out. Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah, I saw uh, that one on the, on, the, on the collector's groups. But I'm a sucker for anything vintage, like anatomical drawings, mm -hmm. pet drawings. If I could do an entire series of posters just with that kind of thing, mm -hmm. especially since they're so easy to find and they're usually free to use, yes. I would do that. Uh, but yeah, this uh, I like this. Did I like how it's laid out. I like just the one color. Um, yeah. Did yeah, did, uh, did you um do you know Richard Wilkinson, the, the artist in, from the UK? He did the uh, this uh, this bug series from like all like like he did like for example Star Wars, and he used like like uh, like they are not real bugs, but and like mm -hmm. some insects, and they, he used that to like um, show how how that looks like with the in the Star Wars universe which is like pretty cool like pretty cool concept i think you would like that then if you're like, that's interesting yeah it's a really cool concept i got i got his book and he came out with that book and i think he um at hero complex gallery i think it was he had mm -hmm. he had he had a show with all those pop culture bugs basically so that was kind of that was a cool thing it's amazing how many different ways there are into this like i don't have any ideas for star wars and then he just illustrates all his bugs yeah it was a different di you know? different approach that was really yeah cool. and you have a third one as well or just the two yeah there was one more um now i'm totally blanking on what i what it was <laughs> yeah. oh uh matt needles james bond series that he's doing uh the from russia with love right that, that's the one yeah you're looking at second movie so yeah the second poster that he did. I'm a fan of his anyway. Yeah, I um, I got to know him um, uh, through Eileen first, and now his like his art is like really really good. I really really enjoy like uh, seeing his art, and did not know about him. So yeah. And he's got a couple dozen posters to do. I think the last one I saw, I think he did. You only live twice, but um, I just chose this one because of, it's my favorite of the Sean Connerys. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a second to realize what that was on top, but that's the uh, blade coming out of Rosa Klebb's yeah, shoe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the rest of the series. Yeah, and uh, are you excited about the new Bond? Do you want to watch the film yes. in general? Yeah. So you were kind of bummed out that it got delayed, right? Yeah. I used to, uh, when I lived here 10 years ago, which we'll talk about later, I actually was a temp for MGM mm -hmm. when Casino Royale came out and they needed, they were doing an employee screening Mm -hmm. in a movie theater yeah. and they wanted to test out the projection and the sound and everything so they sent me and my two fellow temps to the theater to watch it so the three of us literally had the theater to ourselves to watch casino royale that's nice yeah I'll... okay yeah it was fun i enjoyed that I, I bet you did i mean everybody would i guess um i mean um it's, it's kind of hard like uh, right now with all the movies being canceled for example i was on tuesday i was um i was at the uh, mulan press screening and mm -hmm. uh, now it's canceled and mm. my place was the same on Thursday, but I didn't even go to that because of the Corona stuff. And uh, yeah, and so this is now canceled as well. So it's uh, a little bit crazy out there. But yeah, as we as we said, so um, I wondered because since we talked about different artists now, um, if you are uh, if if you followed all the gallery scene like Bottleneck, Mondo, and 1988 and stuff like that. I do. Uh, I've checked out a few shows at 1988, especially since it's I'm in town. I usually actually used to much closer to it. Um, didn't didn't they but, have the Scott uh, C right now? Which one? The Scott C show. I think yeah. uh, it's like I'll see their posts on social media, but mm -hmm. I mean there's so many, it's sort of hard to keep track of them all. Yeah. But uh, and a lot of these uh, galleries, they do a lot of. You know, my work is often so minimalist that it's often not a good fit. I mean, I'd love to do something with one of these, but even Gallery 1988, you know, I'll ask and they'll say, uh, just send us an email with your stuff and we'll let you know. And, you know, who knows? 
that one day. Yeah, I, I bet. I mean, I mean, your art speaks for itself, so it should happen at some point. But uh, I'm a big fan of what these, uh, what they all do. I mean, it sucks when something is released and it's limited and it sells out immediately. Um, I'd love to do an album cover for Mondo. Actually, that's what I really want to do. Yeah, uh, that, that would. That, uh, those are kind of interesting. I mean, I like. I, I even like the slip mats they do. That's also very cool. If they, uh, they, they had the Spider Man or Doctor Doom. Yeah, Doctor Doom was it, right? Yeah, Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four ones. They had. They just did right now. That would, those were pretty cool. But uh, it's funny just how the most random soundtracks are. Yeah, it's like every soundtrack gets a vinyl release, but then they'll, I'll see the most random. Like the soundtrack for not Greece but Greece Two is being reached on vinyl. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a weird cool. thing. Yeah, but people collect. I mean, uh, yeah. they 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 buy all those uh, nice, good looking covers up, and uh, especially the vinyls as well. Yeah, and there's only like, you know, they've been closing all the plants that do that stuff. There are only like a few places that actually still even make vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, I could be wrong on that, but I know. Like between CDs and like all these replication facilities, there aren't nearly as many as they used to be. Yeah. But oh well. So I will now. <laughs> I want to talk about your work and uh, right. starting with that. My I wondered how did you go, get into the game, into the poster making game, and how did you um, freelance? I'll give you the short version. I mean, I went to film school years ago uh, in Orlando at a school called Full Sail. Mm -hmm. Lived out here for a year and a half, worked as a temp and a production assistant and so on. And the filmmaking dream, that ship sort of sailed, uh, cut to several years later. And I'm about to turn 30 and I'm temping and I realized, crap, I'm going to be 30. I don't even have a bachelor's degree yet. And graphic design was always the other thing I was into. So uh I went back to school. I went to Florida Atlantic University, since that was the one I could afford. Mm -hmm. uh, gotten to, you know, did the portfolio, passed that. Uh, graduated in 2015. Um, I actually did some movie-related stuff for our, we had a senior exhibition, and I didn't have enough classwork, so I did some of my own stuff. So I did a couple movie posters, I did a couple of Blu-rays. Mm -hmm. Which it's funny now that I'm actually being paid to do it for real. Uh, how 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 was the, re the the reception from the from your fellow students and your uh, teacher? Well, they're only only in the last semester did I realize, you know, did I make the connection with movie posters? For some reason, like when I started, I never I thought I would just be at, at an agency, you know, doing logos and brand identity and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Actually, the last semester is when Sam Smith and Brandon Schaefer started their Poster Boys podcast, and oh, okay. it all sort of came together, you know, at the same time, like, I could do this too. And then I started discovering other designers, and, you know, I'm not Drew Struz, and I can't illustrate like mm -hmm. that, but, you know, you start in discovering other people, and it's like, okay, I can't do a poster like this, but I could do a poster like that. You know, there might be room at this table for me too. Mm -hmm. And there were only a couple of us who did anything pop culture related in the class. Most it was a lot of logos and magazine layout, and then a, me and another nerd doing our uh, geeky uh, pop culturey design things. Yeah. Uh, the, speaking of uh, Drew Struzan, um, how uh, do you practice uh, illustrating, or is that not the thing you want to do? I mean, I'd be lying if I said I never wanted to give it a try, but, you know, I used to draw as a kid, mm -hmm. like every kid does, but I had to take two drawing classes in school for design and not the easiest thing. I think ultimately it's, I mean, to an extent, I don't have the patience for it. Um, and I, I mean, as much as I would love to do it, I also love the challenge of um, doing more with less, you know, taking one image from a movie, for instance, mm -hmm. Telling how do you tell the story with just one image, yeah. or a certain font, or the way things are placed? Um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it okay. often does with their covers, or what Midnight Marauder does with his posters. It's for me that's a wonderful challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking of uh, creating posters, are there any posters you're doing right now, or some work you can talk about? Uh, I have a few freelance gigs that I'm working on, um, small stuff. I actually have an email that when we're done recording, there's an email I need to return uh, 
this AFI graduate who made his first movie mm -hmm. and a fellow, I've done a couple of posters for AFI students mm -hmm. and I guess word passed through the grapevine and this guy reached out to me to do a poster for his movie and I'm working on a few things for Arrow Video. Mm -hmm. uh, can't really talk about that. And I'm freelancing. I'm doing poster concepts for uh, an HBO movie for one of the a local agency out here, but mm -hmm. uh, can't talk about that either. Okay, yeah, I understand how this game works. I mean, when I talk to Eileen, she's always like, uh, yeah, I can't talk about that. I can't talk about this. So, well, but soon. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, my compositing skills have are certainly getting better and better and taking one image and putting all the different actors into it, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, which up until recently I really tried to avoid, but, uh, no, it's fun. It's interesting. Yeah. It's a challenge. It's I, great when you get all these resources to work with. Yeah, I bet. So, um, speaking of creating your poster, uh, is there one of your posters you want to talk about? Because I'm interested in what is your approach and how long does it take and all of those questions. But, um, Let's pick one and we're gonna talk about the poster, uh, how you created it. Is that possible? Well, let's do, uh, uh, you know what, let's do Dogma. Dogma, all right. Short version is after I, well, I have to go back in time a little bit. After I graduated, I got a job right out of school at an agency in Boca Raton back in Florida. I quit after six months and then I read about a guy, uh, Pete Majarek or Majorik, I'm not sure, um, Craft and Graft on Instagram. He was doing a movie poster a day for a year, so I thought, I could do that. So I did a movie poster a day for a year. This was one of them, mm -hmm. Dogma. I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. Um, I'm excited for the, uh, uh, what is he doing? He's, he's going to do a new one, but I forgot which one. Well, he did Jane's Silent Bob reboot. Was it this one I'm talking about? No, I, oh, I was talking about Clerks 2 and something else. Or 3. Three, uh, well, he's yeah, three. yeah, that's right. You're uh, right. No, I'll see it if he makes it. I'll see it. <laughs> uh, but um, but with Dogma, which this is the only poster of mine that ever got a lot of attention at the time, since Kevin Smith was kind enough to uh, retweet it and comment on it, which uh, cool. was very nice of him. But again, this is just the case of I mean, the movie deals with religion, specifically the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So I start thinking about that and is, you know, is there some famous, uh, I'm not religious, but I don't want to be blasphemous either. Yeah. But then you start thinking, well, okay, is there some piece of iconography that maybe I could do something with? So then I thought of that. And given that it's Kevin Smith and, you know, the Jane Silent Bob characters, I just added the joint to it. And uh, it says so much without saying anything at all, really. Yeah. So how was how was the approach? How did you um, or how did you come up with it? Is there was an idea or did you know right away this is what I want to do or do you do uh, research? With this one, I'm sure I probably would have looked at the movie, maybe thinking is there. Well, actually, at, at this point, when I was doing the daily posters, I was trying to avoid using imagery from the films. Mm -hmm. But then when the other guy started doing it, then I did, too. Uh, and, you know, so I just. I'm sure I did the research. I probably would have gone on Wikipedia, you know, is there, you know, thinking, Oh, is there like a painting or something, mm -hmm. uh, that I could use? And then I saw this, and I mean, I've seen the art, we've all seen this artwork before. And then I thought I could use that. And then since his character, you know, characters in the movie are stoners, yeah. uh, just added the joint and that's just an illustration. Um, everything else, the tagline, the, Credit, that's all just from the poster, mm -hmm. uh, you know, added and the daily posters I did full size. I did 27 by 40. Yeah, 41, uh, yeah. Thankfully the, uh, imagery held up and I added the canvas texture to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this, this is one I would probably do the same way. Now there are other daily posters that I did that I'm actually redoing because I would do them totally different. Now this one I would I would do it like this now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did this one three and a half years ago at this point. Okay. And uh, do you, uh, is it the approach, like with every poster you do, that you do this way, do the research, watch, look at the like, material from the... Uh, off, sometimes if I'm watching a movie and there's just a beautiful shot in the movie, I will literally pause it and say, that's it. That's the poster. Okay. Or I'll be on a stock photo website. There's a great one called Unsplash. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I'll be scrolling through stock photos and I'll see a photo and I'll think, oh, that photo, that'll work for such and such okay, movie. Okay. So okay. I have a whole folder of photos just ready to be used. Other ones, uh, I'm redoing some daily posters now. Uh, some are stills from the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, some are gags. Uh, you know, trying to do like a poster based on like a gag yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Um, and there's some that are just screenshots because it was just a great looking shot and it was framed well, or the character mm-hmm. had a great reaction on their face. And it's like, I need to use that. Does that, does it help you uh, like study uh, that you studied uh, becoming a filmmaker in, in that regard, like seeing those beautiful sh- shots that. It not so much with the actual poster design, But when it comes to talking to clients and dealing with agencies where I can, you know, because I know the jargon, I could say, hey, do you have this shot? Do you have a wide shot? Yeah. Or I love this character. Do you have a close up of him? And I know that's pretty that's filmmaking 101. Yeah. But I could talk to them on that level yeah. versus saying, can you. I don't know what someone else would say, <laughs> but I could do it in their lingo. Okay. But then. Graphic design and poster design, you know, has its own jargon and where they might not know what a certain thing is and I have to explain it, but I always enjoy that. Anything to educate mm-hmm. people with this. Perfect. And how do, how long does it take to create such a poster? Is that, is, is, is that different from uh, depending on what material you have? or It is different. Um, I mean, some I could probably, I've probably done in as little as 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are others where it's more of a struggle and I'm just doing it a little bit every day. Um, and I have a whole list of posters that I want to do or redo. Mm-hmm. And it's been months or years at this point. I just don't have an idea yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I see. I see. And, um, w- were your posters ever printed somewhere? Did you, or did you print them themselves some sometimes? Because, um, speaking of that, that I collect, collect posters as well. I always look to try to acquire some. Um, I uh, I did have a store online on a website called Society Six, but I closed mm-hmm. it. Their interface was a bit wonky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm always looking for a new shop, but there's a printer in Burbank called yeah. Color Images, and if anyone wants a poster, you know, I just have it printed there, and it's usually ready within a day or two. Mm-hmm. So I can do my own printing, but yeah, it would be easier to have someone else do it. Okay, but um, how do you like to like? Because like the the all the um... The bigger galleries, they try to do all those uh, screen prints and stuff like that. Would you see, would you like to see your posters in that way as well? Because a couple probably could be creative because it's probably hard when it's more colors, you know? You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd love to if anyone was open to it. Um, one day I just need to sit down and email all these places and yeah. go from there. I mean, But again, my work is, yeah. I mean, the dogma would probably work pretty well as a screen print. I mean, if there's some gallery that was doing a Kevin Smith themed show, mm-hmm. I'd end in in a heartbeat. I mean, I did a, uh, there's a shop, uh, I'm waiting for them to reopen called Creature Features mm-hmm. in Burbank. And they did a, they did an art show for the thing. And then they did one for, uh, they did a Kubrick themed art show. And I was in that one. And they did a Spielberg Amblin Entertainment themed one, but I hadn't yet moved back out here. Otherwise I would have tried to get into that one too. Mm-hmm. And they did a Tim Curry themed art show actually too. They didn't, I didn't have anything in time to send them. Okay. Okay. Um, I see. And, um, what would you say is the most challenging poster you had to do or even still you didn't done yet? Uh, of the challenging ones I've done, um, yeah, or, or one maybe that you still, you really want to do this, but you just can't come up with the idea or, or something like that. I mean, ultimately, I mean, I'm not even bothered. I'm not even trying anything like Marvel or DC, mm-hmm. but honestly, the Star Wars trilogy, because but so many people have done posters mm-hmm. for those. And the, 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 the regular film posters are like a classic and they're, they're classic in their own, you know, in their own right. Yeah. But I've got a book on my shelf that has them all. Uh, but just finding a new way in and because I'm not an illustrator makes it a little tougher. Okay. Uh, do that. And I think someone told, you know, someone told me, Oh, you could do it Saul Bass style, but I don't really want to, mm-hmm. uh, I want to do
do, I want to go further with it, but mm-hmm. if one night I'll be in bed, the light bulb will go off okay. and I'll have. Okay. I'm, I'm excited not, because I'm a big Star Wars fan and I'm looking forward I to can the posters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can tell easily by this. Yeah. I forgot about that. I'm I should have worn my, one of my, uh, Oh, I won't get it. I'll show you after. Uh, <laughs> one of my Star Wars shirts. Well, it was it was uh, it wasn't on purpose. I I just I, f- I forgot that I was wearing it. <laughs> so, okay. Um. So my next question is gonna go a little bit out there, but okay. Which classical artist would you like to see to like, make a film poster? Uh, you know, the, I the first one that comes to mind is Caravaggio. Caravaggio, yeah. I, I pulled him up. Just, I pulled this. Uh, I pulled this uh, one. Picture. I forget. God, I forget the name of that painting. Um, oh, it's uh, the Calling of Saint Matthew. Yeah. yeah my uh, art history teacher will be uh, happy that I remember <laughs> any of this. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's you know the chiaroscuro lighting, the high contrast, mm-hmm. just the placement. Mm-hmm. Um, someone on Twitter, a film critic, remarked how sort of blocking characters, because you know movies today often move just so fast, or everyone's shot in front of a green screen, and you yeah. know film in different on different days. Uh, you know the art of blocking characters is sort of becoming a lost art. Mm-hmm. Just arranging everything just perfectly, and yeah, I'd love to see what someone like Caravaggio could have done with like a big ensemble style movie. Uh, well, what could you, uh, which like, let's say, uh, which movie in the, uh, in the last century or something like that, would you think he would have loved to do? Well, I can't uh, attest to his personal yeah, taste. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, in his style, he's, he's doing his painting. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I'd love to see him tackle one of the superhero movies. Okay. You know, yeah. see him do, Batman versus Superman or the Avengers or something. Just yeah, looking at this picture with the lighting, I mean, especially the, the, the sea stuff because it's so like dark ish. And like, I think that would, <laughs> this would be very interesting to see what he would do. He could have, he could have done posters for, you know, Christopher Nolan's, uh, dark Knight oh, trilogy. Yeah. Something. Oh my God. <laughs> my God. Now I want to see him do the posters, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. That, that okay. was a very good answer, and I'm uh, I'm gonna ask that every artist uh, I'm gonna interview, and I will I, see what they gonna answer. I wanted to say Kandinsky, but his yeah. stuff is a bit abstract for a movie poster, though. I mean, they're abstract movies, I would say. True. So maybe maybe he would have found something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Next question is gonna look into the future a little bit. Um, what IP or idea would you like to work on other than Star Wars? Because we heard about that, and and, yeah. and the um, music, the soundtracks as well. <laughs> well, well, it's funny. I know some people involved in the soundtrack business, mm-hmm. and you know, I'll mention it. And it's like all I want to do is one, <laughs> one soundtrack. Yeah. I don't care what okay. the movie is. Uh, I just want to design the package. The liner notes the whole thing although i'm actually i'm doing stuff like that for arrow for movies now mm-hmm. but just one soundtrack one day and um do you have one uh, that you really would love to do honestly nothing off the top of my head and a lot of my favorite film scores have been are reissued you know they're out already mm-hmm. uh but as far as properties or franchises i just anything star trek i don't care what it is i'll sweep the floors i'll do craft services just anything mm-hmm. uh you know that's my favorite franchise, and yeah. Speaking of Star uh, Trek, I just put your Star Trek a Wrath of Khan okay. poster in there okay. to look at. Yeah, I like how that one turned out. I'm a big fan of Russian constructivism, but um, yeah, anything Star Trek, whether it's a poster or a soundtrack or a Blu-ray mm-hmm. or even working on one of the shows, because one of my heroes is Michael Okuda, mm-hmm. who was Star Trek's one of their graphic designers for many years, and that's actually how I got into graphic design was through the work they did on the shows yeah. with all panels and the signage and all that. So I would kill to do something like that. Uh, <laughs> I hope that answers your question at all. But you don't want to do like sports or uh, some other stuff as well, or? Not a big sports guy. It's an understatement, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm just not into it. Sure, it's okay. uh, there are a few bands that I like. There's a band I like out of, I think they're out of Portland called Pink Martini. Mm-hmm. I'd love to do an album cover for them. They're very eclectic. Um, 
I think someone described them as if the United Nations had a house band in the 60s. Uh, they're very international. They do cover, they do original. But uh, I'd love to do an album cover for them. Uh, Green Day, Blink-182, uh, you know, a few others. Uh, if Blondie does another album one day. All right, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, so we're almost at the end of our uh, little interview. Um, one of the questions probably everybody's going to ask, do you have any tips for other beginners? Well, this is good advice anyway. Don't be afraid to fail mm -hmm. and, or ask to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's also, it's also okay if you, like if you're in school or you're just getting out of school, it's okay if you don't know what you want to do. Um, but You know, I actually talked to some of the students at my alma mater last year who were graduating and I told them whether you're into design students and I told them whether you're into movie posters or album covers or typography, whatever, post stuff online, reach out, you'll find your community of people, you know, as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, just have fun with it. I mean, if you're just starting out, have fun with it, but You know, it's impossible to know everything in Photoshop and Illustrator, but know enough so when you do get that job, you're not flailing. Mm -hmm. But even then, yeah, I interned at one of the big agencies out here a few years ago, and if I didn't know how to do something on Photoshop, I Googled it mm -hmm. or I asked. Better to ask than not. Yeah, and um, we, we talked about earlier about social media, and I mean, it's very important nowadays. Uh, So I'm just going to skip that part. But uh, what kind of software do you use when you or what would you recommend? Which software should be used? I, I work mostly in Photoshop. Um, and it's funny since I had classmates who were more familiar with Illustrator. Yeah, I was just wondering which, because because like when I was doing stuff, I used also Illustrator rather than Photoshop. But what's funny is for me, Illustrator was the hard one. But then I would talk to people and they'd say, oh, no, Illustrator is easy. Photoshop is the hard one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Mostly Photoshop, some Illustrator, uh, you know, like the film or set that I did from Arrow. That's all Illustrator. Yeah, okay. Uh, or often I'll do a title in Illustrator and then bring that into Photoshop. Um, I have the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, mm -hmm. so a lot of my fonts I get from there. Uh, and I've become much more conservative with that. I used to use the craziest fonts, and now I'm trying to uh, rein that in a bit. Yeah. Uh, even my website, it's on Adobe portfolio. It's like, I'm paying all this money. I'm using all their stuff. <laughs> I see. But yeah, mostly, mo mostly Photoshop and illustrator. And I, some posters I've actually gone out and taken my own photos mm -hmm. okay. to use stuff like phone. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are alternatives. There are other similar programs, but those are the ones mm -hmm. most people. Okay, and uh, when it comes to hardware, do you use like a like a pencil, like a digital pencil or something like that, or just the mouse and I, keyboard? Uh, I use my Wacom tablet, mm -hmm. you know, when I need to trace out people. Other than that, I'm strictly a mouse person. I don't use the tablet and stylus for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just a regular small Wacom tablet, not one of the fancy ones. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, um, last question. If a robber would come to your house, or if you were a robber, I'm sorry, if you were a robber and you would rob your own house, and let's imagine you have all your uh, posters that you did, you have them up somewhere, which one would you take and why? Wow. You just can, you uh, have, to have to pick one only. You cannot pick only one. I don't know. I'd probably pick the one that was most visually striking, but I'm not entirely sure which one is the most visually striking. I would take the uh, box sets I've done for Arrow, to be honest, because they're out of print and hard to find. Okay. But let's say, uh, uh, which has the most emotional value maybe for you? Maybe Dogma, or maybe the poster I did last year for Us, the Jordan Peele yeah, let me, movie. Just Let me pull that up real quick. Okay, here we go. It's up. Yeah, I, I really like that one. That's, that's creepy AF. Well, that one... I was not expecting this, you know, uh, I guess a marketing person from Universal reached out to a bunch of us, me, Eileen, and so on, and mm -hmm. because they wanted to do something with all this fan art. Mm -hmm. So that poster, it was up in South by Southwest, which thankfully this was last year, not this year. Yeah. Um, you could, they interviewed the cast on The Daily Show, and Lupita Nyong'o is sitting right in front of it. So you see it on The Daily Show. Crazy. 
And the young girl uh, who's on the poster in that shot saw it on Instagram and wanted a copy. Nice. So you so got I her one, right? And what? You got her one, right? Yeah. Uh, so it just sort of blew up like that. I mm. uh, actually just did a poster for a movie coming out soon that's in a similar style called Antebellum. Uh, yeah, did you, did that you one, post not, it on Instagram already? I did, but I think Instagram is uh, being kind of shitty right now, so didn't quite get the attention. Yeah, that, I, I that saw was, that one. I was really, I was really reminded of that. So yeah, saw the reference. And, <laughs> and as I did with us, it's just screenshots, mm -hmm. but it's two similar screenshots overlaid over each other, it's, uh, it's, which it's great, I enjoy doing. It's a really great one. I really like this one as well. Um, okay, so. Uh, this is it basically, but before we're gonna uh, close out, I just wanted to give you the sh the chance to shout out some artists you really appreciate maybe, and uh, of course, where the people can find you. Well, I could be found at uh, scottsaslow.com, uh, S-C-O-T-T-S-A-S-L-O-W, and that has all my social media links. I'm on Instagram at scottsaslow.com, and Twitter, uh, Saslo underscore Scott, since the other name was taken already. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm digging what Sister Hyde does. Uh, always looking forward to what Eileen posts. Uh, Matt Needle, Ben Turner, uh, Bella Grace just knocks me the hell out with her stuff. She has that Mulan poster now. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, I saw that one. The, the, the post the posse one, right? Is that the one? Yeah. yeah. It's like I can't even imagine Disney tweeting my work, you know? <laughs> Soon, uh, soon. Give it some time. But there are so many, and I feel bad for leaving everybody out. But uh, the, yeah, it's just—it's a lot. It's a very nice, friendly community, you know. I must say, and everyone's cool and creative. And I, who five years ago, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay, then uh, thank you for stopping by, Scott. And thanks to all the listeners out there. Uh, tune in to the next episode, probably in about four weeks. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and to our IG page, uh, Drop Mac Official on Instagram. And leave us comments, shout outs, uh, or topics and questions we should explore in our next show. So, bye.